Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Not much happening across Metro Detroit in the weather department right now, but there are some rain chances, some snow chances, and oh yeah, those could impact a few big events on your calendar. Good to have you with us at noon, everybody. I'm Jason Colthorpe. And I'm Kinda Julio. Thanks for joining us. So, yeah, big events on your calendar. We've been talking a lot about opening day. Yep. Uh, that's something that happens every year, though. So if it rains, it's like, okay. But then we've got this big event on Monday that really doesn't happen often. Ashley, that doesn't happen too often. <laughs> No pressure or anything, right, guys? Uh, as we look at Comerica Park, because we do get past opening day first before we talk about the solar eclipse, tarps off the field. So we've been drying out a little bit. We knew that we would get that break in the rain with more showers developing about 3, 4 o'clock onward, but at least that we've had enough of a break to take the tarp off the field over at Comerica Park. So good shot at this lunch hour. Temperatures have not fluctuated much. Steadily in the 40s, 43 in the city, 41 in Ann Arbor, 43 in Port Huron, and then we have 44 in Monroe with winds between 10 to 15 miles per hour coming out of the south southwest. So that low pressure system so slow moving and so it just continues to churn over the Great Lakes bringing those snow showers through the UP down into the Chicagoland area and then some heavy moisture that's now pushing into the nor northeast and some of that rain will eventually change over to snow for portions of the northeast. Now here close to home here's those spotty showers that will eventually work their way here into southeastern Michigan but exact track 4D pretty dry for now but we certainly have the cloud cover out there. We get a little sliver of sunshine here and there. Then the clouds build back in. So a wet and windy afternoon ahead, about 3 o'clock onward. Gusts will be around 20 miles per hour with those scattered showers across the area. We'll take you through the timeline of what to expect on opening day and for Solar Eclipse Monday in just a few minutes. All right, Ashley. New into the newsroom here at noon, what police are calling a scary case of stalking. And it comes from Hazel Park, where a 52-year-old woman is now facing charges. Victor Williams is following this story. He joins us live with all the details. What have you learned, Victor? Well, guys, this one is just really mind-boggling. One woman's obsession with a man that was originally a crush ended up turning into a case of felonious assault that played out right here on this street behind me. We know that 52-year-old Jai Yu out of Rochester has been arrested in connection to the case. It's alleged that she became obsessed with a man that she saw working out at the gym and then proceeded to stalk him along with his girlfriend by using a tracking device on both of their vehicles. It all came to a head this past Friday when the victim's girlfriend says she was struck by a pistol while only sitting in her car on West Shevlin here in Hazel Park. At that time, the woman who was hit, she had no idea what was going on, who this person was or why the attack was even happening. The attacker then allegedly took off in a gray F-150. It didn't take long for investigators to match up a license plate and then went over to the registered address where they questioned this woman. She allegedly admitted that she wanted to scare her crush's girlfriend out of the picture. As you guys can imagine, neighbors on the street couldn't even believe it. It's kind of scary to think that people go to that length to, you know, figure something out with, you know, that kind of intent. It's, it, what's the world coming to is kind of what I'm thinking, you know, like that people have to stalk other people down, like scary. Now, this does sound like something out of a movie. As a result, Jai Yu, she's been charged with felonious assault, stalking, and then on top of that, tracking a motor vehicle as well as some other charges we're going to tell you about later on at 5 p.m. Live in Hazel Park, Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor, now to an update on a story we brought you this morning out of Ann Arbor. Police have a suspect in custody after a passenger was stabbed on a bus earlier this morning. We're told the 25 year old victim is being treated for serious injuries, but is expected to be OK. That stabbing happened on Fuller Road near the Ford Presidential Library. Police tell us the victim and the suspect bumped into each other on the bus, which led to the stabbing. Get ready for possibly higher egg prices or eggflation. A major egg producer in the U.S. has temporarily halted production at a Texas plant due to the bird flu. Additionally, the virus has been found at a poultry facility here in Michigan. However, there is no risk associated with eggs currently in the market and no recalls have been issued. Properly handled and cooked eggs remain safe to eat. This marks the fourth detection of bird flu at a commercial facility in Michigan since the year 2022. 
Former President Donald Trump facing pushback from a West Michigan family following the comments he made during a campaign stop on the West Side. The Republican presidential candidate was in Grand Rapids yesterday where he talked about the border. He highlighted the case of Ruby Garcia, who was killed in Grand Rapids by an acquaintance who was in the country illegally. During his speech, he mentioned he talked to the Garcia family, but the family is now saying that never happened. Now Ruby's loved ones and community are left grieving for this Incredible young woman remembering what they called her. They said she had just this most contagious laughter. He did not speak with any of us, so it was um, kind of shocking seeing that he had said that he had spoke with us and, you know, um, saying, well, misinforming people um, live TV. We did reach out to the Trump campaign uh, for this story. Haven't gotten a comment as of yet. The state of Michigan set to pioneer a groundbreaking initiative, becoming the first state in the U.S. to implement kinship care rules for relatives who take in loved ones. The, new will, the move will treat family caregivers the same as foster care providers, with the same level of financial assistance and licensing requirements. The initiative aims to streamline the process for family caregivers. In Michigan, more than 54,000 children are in such arrangements. We'd be remiss if we didn't point out that uh, you could win $1.1 billion by spending $2. Yeah, and that could happen tonight. Yeah. So the last time somebody hit the jackpot here, uh, well, it was actually here in Michigan. So maybe it could be could here in Michigan again. again. Yeah, so we're going to have those winning numbers for you tonight right here on Local 4 at 11. There you go. Good luck on the Powerball. Yes. Uh, the Tigers home opener coming up Friday. How about you have a better chance to win these than you do the Powerball? Two free tickets. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Not worth as much as the Powerball, <laughs> but uh, we are giving away tickets on the contest page of clickondetroit.com. The window to enter ends tomorrow, Thursday at 1230. And because I know a lot of fans out there uh, paying attention to the last seven games left for the Pistons, there's one at home, six on the road. They have the Hawks tonight in Atlanta. And it's kind of a big one, actually, if you can believe that. It is a big one. So the Pistons need at least four wins over this final stretch to avoid having the worst record in franchise history. Don't want that, plus the NBA's longest losing streak all in the same season. Yeah, but maybe it would make sense if it really, if it was on the it same It seems season. likely. I wouldn't bet against it. Let's put it that <laughs> exactly. way.